Well, we've had enough requests over the past year or so to see more of the Shaper. So, I think we found a good job to play with the Shaper. So, as you see me, we just, we just finished welding this piece up right here. And I want to go ahead and, and clean it up, just make it, you know, dress it all down. And I, I mentioned that I think I'm going to use the milling machine. And the more I got to thinking about it, I realized, like I said, that's probably a pretty good shaper job. And I even had somebody make a comment in the video that uh, looks like the shaper's over there with his hand raised up. <laughs> so I'm getting it set up now. I'll show you how I'm doing it. Basically, using the very same setup that I used in the mill down here. Got an angle plate, and I'm jacking it up. We're going to indicate it. We're going to indicate this flat and uh, use our Armstrong clamps to hold it on there and a high-speed tool bit, and we'll just take our time and let it cut. Today's Sunday, and it's absolutely beautiful outside. It's kind of cool. It's in the 60s, a clear blue sky, so I'm just kind of enjoying the Sunday for a little while and uh, probably go out here and do a little barbecue this evening. So I'll go ahead. You know, this is going to take a little while because Shaper naturally takes a little while, but I can let that thing cut. You know, I can go down here to the computer and read comments and stuff like that while it's cutting. So let's go ahead and finish getting her set up, all right? We'll, we'll stick an indicator on here, and we'll, uh, we'll stroke it out, and I'll jack on this uh, machinist screw right here, this machinist jack, and get it, get it level. I'm hoping you get a good shot of that, and I'm using one of my old federal indicators there that we had prepared. Um, I'm hoping maybe this will, uh, you can see it a little better on video. So initially we'll, I'm going to set a level on there, and it's, it's pretty close, it's about a half a bubble off. We've got this clamp snug. I'm just going to raise up on this until, it, until it's close. I'm, I don't want to go past it, I'd rather come up to it. So That's pretty close. So, now we'll go ahead, and I got my Noga mounted right here. High spots right there on the end. But in the middle here, looks like we've got her, I'm going to say within a thousandths. Let's go up just a little more. I'm going to call that good enough. Wearing my Sunday's best attire, in case you ain't noticed. Shot of the setup. 
angle plate, a couple clamps. I got this clamp loose from the back so it won't hit there. And everything should clear. So I just need to get I need to get my cut set up and then once we get everything ready to go, I'll bring you back. Alright, all I need to do is maybe adjust my speed. This is a variable speed machine, by the way. We're just going to start with that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just touch the plate next to the weld, and we'll cut the weld first, and then we'll come back and make a uh, like a cleanup cut all the way across the plate. There. I'm just feeding down with the compound. Yeah, we're touching on the ends there. That's interesting. All right. I'm going to go ahead and got the feet on. Yeah. We'll be getting there just a second here, guys. So I want to mention that when we relock re the compound, we've got the uh, the table here, the knee. It's locked on the side, and we got the supports down here, both locked. So it should be ready to go. What do you think? Is it working? It's not too bad, really. the well cleaned up anyway so I'm gonna stop it it's just uh, it's just cutting on across the plate there where I had touched off on this side let's, uh, let's wipe that off real quick doing pretty good so what I'll do is I'll come on across I'll come back over here and we'll take a we'll take another light cut I'm gonna slow the feed rate down some and I'll let it pass all the way across and uh, maybe it'll it'll leave a pretty smooth finish on it. got a couple little valleys there that'll probably clean up with another light cut There with the uh, some way lube and the little oil buttons, be good to go. All right, we'll let that cut. See how she does. All right, we made it about halfway across. Everything's looking good.
just about made it to the end of the cut here. Just a little longer and we'll get that. That'll be finished off. And it's looking good. I'm, I'm happy with it. I think we're going to leave it just like that. All right, we got her filed on both sides. And there's you a shot of the finish. Now I'll say that that's, that's actually a little bit of a rough finish right there. That tool that I'm using right here, that, has a, that doesn't have much radius on it. So this is more of a roughing tool. So I think what I want to do, since I'm just playing around with this and I'm taking my time, I'm going to go in there with this other tool. This is one I've been using also. This is one that I ground and we've got a nice radius um, ground and honed in on this corner. So I think I want to go back with this one and make another really, really light cut and see if I can uh, improve the finish on this, maybe speed it up a little bit too. And just play around, guys. That's all I'm doing here. And I'm not going to bore you through the whole process. I'll just give you a couple quick highlights so that you can see it and uh, see how we finish out, all right? there we are with our with our finish and it did clean up a lot nicer just got one little speck right there well there's one right there and right there but I'm just nitpicking guys I mean this doesn't even matter but it did clean up really well I'm happy with that so I gotta do another little file there and we're gonna uh, flip it and Go to the other side. I still want to do this side right here also and get that done. All right, so we got her flipped over and I'm doing the same thing. I'm getting, getting it indicated. There's a lot of little variance in this uh, rough finish right here. So I've got it within a few thousandths and I'm happy with, with where it's at. When you get to the end, it's about two or three thousandths difference from there. So I'm gonna leave it alone at that. Okay, so we'll uh, go ahead and take this off, and I need to uh, get my cut set, and we'll cut that weld off just like we did before. This is that bigger weld, so we'll just go ahead and touch off and go all the way across that weld there in one pass. table here everything's tight definitely a habit you got to try to get into remember to uh, lock everything down good on that first pass there and cut the weld. 
Uh, I've already moved it over and I've, I've moved it down 15,000, so I'm going to try that. Um, trying to just take minimal cuts here to clean it up, but I want it to look good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring it back across. Doing good, guys. Doing good. There's our first cut all the way across there, and you can see it didn't quite clean it up, which <laughs> which will be fine. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make another cut. I wanna I wanna make sure that it's cleaned up good, and uh, maybe it'll remove those little valleys there too, but I'll probably just take, say, another uh, 15,000. Alrighty, we got our cut finished here. I think that is gonna be just fine. Still got a little bit of the low right there on that edge, but You'll never know it. I actually had, um, before this cut, you get out of the, the light over there, I took the, the tool out and uh, rehoned it. It was still good and sharp, but I went ahead and rehoned it anyway. And it's leaving a nice finish on there. It's, it's really, it's smooth. It's just, a, you know, doing stuff like this here, it's just another way for me to get a little bit of practice in on the machine. And this is a pretty basic operation to do on a shaper, but you know, the more time you spend on them, the, the more familiar that you just get with everything. So I'm just having fun with it, really. All right, so clean this up. And then what we'll do is now that I got this flat, we'll flip it, black, uh, flip it back over, probably put it on some uh, one, two, three blocks and then we'll trim that back corner down there. All right, guys, we got the thing flipped over. I got it on some one, two, three blocks and clamped up, and I'm getting the uh, stroke adjusted where I want it to do this little cut right here. And I figured since I'm doing this, I might go ahead and, and mention it because there are a lot of people that's watching these videos that's not really familiar with this machine, and they've seen it a few times in a, in a few videos out there, but. This is a 12 inch shaper. This is a, a 12 inch Sheldon shaper. And with a shaper, uh, from how I understand a shaper, you typically have whatever the stroke is, it's basically the work envelope you have, 12 by 12 by 12 cube, okay? You can also adjust how much stroke you want from very little to the full 12 inch. And same thing on a big shaper, whatever size shaper you got. But you can also adjust this ram so the work is out here. So we, we don't want the, the stroke over here. We want, it, we want it out here. So you can adjust it up here, and I'm going to show you. I've got it pretty much adjusted the way I want, out here. Okay, you can loosen this. If I needed to go out a little bit further, loosen this one. Let's see. It's, uh, all right, so that's pulling it back that way. Or I can crank it that way. Tighten that up. It just it brought the cut a little bit further that way. Now to adjust your stroke length, you've got a, you've got a square right here, and this adjusts the crank in there. made more stroke there, and I can tighten it up. See that? And I'm just doing this to play with it so to show you guys, kind of have an understanding. And you can really tighten it up. And all that is is a set of gears in there and it's moving the block. 
up and down this slot there. And when that thing rocks back and forth, that's how much throw it's got. On. Alright, so I'm just kind of bringing it back where I had it here. Right, that'll, that'll work right there. So, Alright, same thing. We'll, uh, let me cut the weld off and then we'll make a finish pass across the whole thing there. Make our, we're making our final cut here. What I did was I just moved over to that corner and brought the compound down till it touched and took another five on the, on the dial and let it rip. All right, looks like we got it done with it. good guys that's that scale that keeps <laughs> you wipe it and it just keeps coming on back so you look good there all right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna go dry uh, or <laughs> I'm gonna dress these little divots here where the welds were rolled over on, on the ends and I want to file it file the edges right here and I'll, I'll give you a better look at it over there on the table all right, guys. There's the there's what we've done so far, and I'm happy the way it's turning out. Got all the corners filed, and I dress this with the uh, flap wheel over there. This will be our square block side. This side will st still has to be machined, but I may end up squaring this end up anyway. Make sure it's nice and square with all the other edges. But it's coming along and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking in the beginning that I was gonna be using the shaper on this, but we did and that, that's pretty cool. So there we go, uh, on to the next phase.